Hi everyone, this is Dr. Saiti, Team MDS Conquer. So let's have a quick revision of your biochemistry, protein metabolism. So if you see, these are the elemental composition of proteins, where they are, where it is constituted by five major elements, that is carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So the composition is quite important. So exactly the numerical value it might be asked. So just have a look of this. So amino acids are nothing but their organic compounds which consists of two functional groups that is amino and carboxyl. Okay, so amino group is basic while as carboxyl group is acidic in nature. Okay, so this is regarding the simple introduction. So coming to the protein structure, so what is primary, what is secondary, what is tertiary and what is quaternary. Okay, so secondary is like a helix and chains of polypeptide chains are with tertiary and the complex of the protein molecule is with the quaternary. Okay, so various functions of the protein if you see they are called as the working horses, right. So why because they have very good functions exhibited. So see you can see all the functions that they provide structural components, they help in movement of the muscles, they store the nutrients, they carry the essential substances throughout the body, they regulate the body metabolism. Okay, and they catalyze the biochemical reactions as well as they recognize and also destroy the foreign bodies. Okay, so these are the important functions. Next, what are the essential and non-essential? So this is quite important. Okay, so I think you, you know it. So just give a good glance to this. Next, based on the structure again, it is again divided as aliphatic, aromatic, acidic, basic hydroxylic, sulfur containing and amidic, con, uh, amide or amidic and acidic. Okay, so if you see here, the names which comes under aliphatic are all these. Okay, so at times if they want to post a memory based question though definitely they can ask from here. So even have a look of the classification based on the atomic structure and based on the composition. Okay, and again based on non-polar and polar groups negatively and positively charged. So this is one more classification. So even have a look of this. And uh, the metabolic fate. So what are, what comes under ketogenic and what comes under glucogenic and what comes under both. So ketogenic are lysine and leucine whereas both is tryptophan, threonine, phenylalanine, tyrosine and isoleucine whereas glucogenic comes like all the others comes with glucogenic. So this is the metabolic fate. Okay, so this is important non-protein amino acids with their respective functions. So even if you have knowledge regarding this well and good or else just give a glance to it. Okay, so just give a quick glance to it. Okay, so next this there is a process called as transamination and deamination. Okay, which is again quite important. So if you see this chart, it is pretty clear and self-explanatory. Okay, so transamination, there is transamination, that is transfer of amino group one from an amino acid to a keto acid. So that is called as a transamination. Okay, and it is again mediated by the so-called enzymes, which are nothing but the transaminases, which are previously were called as a amino transferases. Okay, so very important, all amino acids except lysine, threonine, proline and hydroxychlorine participate in transamination. So except these four, all the others participate. Okay, So these are the important points and only two namely aspartate transaminase and alanine, alanine transaminase make a significant contribution to the transamination. Okay, So these are the enzymes and what all amino acids except like exceptions are quite important right. So make the note of it. Next oxidative deamination where is there is liberation of free ammonia coupled with oxygen. So from the amine group there is liberation of the free ammonia. Okay, So in the process of transamination, so we have discussed right, so there is amino, I mean the transfer occurs but in oxidative deamination there is finally liberation of the free ammonia. So the glutamate is the only amino acid that undergoes oxidative deamination to significantly release or liberate free ammonia for urea synthesis. So even in the previous chart if you see, I see this is a glutamate right. So glutamate undergoes oxidative deamination in order to liberate free ammonia so as to participate in urea synthesis okay and glutamate dehydrogenase is a zinc containing mitochondrial enzyme. 
Okay, so these are the important points. So even you can have a look of this. Next, non-oxidative deamination examples. So here it's quite pretty clear. So what are all the examples for non-oxidative deamination? So just make a note of all these. Okay, all the important points point to be noted, or all these points. So just give a glance to all these important points which are being noted here. Next, we'll discuss one by one. So glycine. This is the overview of glycine metabolism. Okay. So, so main thing related to glycine which is quite important is the metabolic disorders of glycine. So that is glycineuria and primary hyperoxaluria. Okay, so this is very important because they can ask as applied aspects. Okay, so where the uh, if you see glycineuria, there is serum glycine concentration is normal. But very high amount of it is being excreted in urine. So urea means it is being excreted in urine. It is because of defective renal reabsorption. When there is defective renal reabsorption, glycineuria occurs, and it is characterized by increased tendency of formation of oxalate renal stones. Okay, whereas the urinary oxalate level is normal in these patients. So these are the true or false statements that can be asked. So give a glance to it. Next, primary hyperoxaluria. So here there is increased urinary oxalate resulting, resulting in oxalate stones. Okay, so here there is oxalate stones. Okay, so this is re regarding that. So primary is hyperoxaluria is due to the defect in glycine transaminase. Okay, so it was asked once. So what? It is because of what? It is because of defect in glycine transaminase. Next, coming to the creatinine. Okay, so just give a chart uh, look to the metabolism of the creatinine. So it's pretty clear what are the reactions that occur. So just give a look to this. Okay, so the creatinine is again converted to creatine phosphate. Okay, so just have a look of this. Next, phenyl phenylalanine and tyrosine. So very very important. So this chart is very very important. Okay, and also the synthesis of phenylalanine is also important. So, uh, so, sorry, synthesis of tyrosine from phenylalanine. Okay, so that is quite important. So, if there is a block here, then it results in phenyl ketone urea. Okay, so phenylalanine and tyrosine are interrelated to each other. So, just give a good grip or uh, just have a good glance to this chart. Okay, have a grip of the metabolism related to both these. So, if you see here. Next is the tyrosine. So tyrosine is actually important for the thyroid hormones, synthesis of thyroid hormones. So okay, and albinism is due to the lack of synthesis of melanin, and it is a autosomal recessive disorder. Okay, so tyrosine again important for melanin pigmentation and melanin. Uh, I mean synthesis of pigment of melanin also. So if there is a problem with Tyrosine obviously it can result in lack of this pigment that is melanin. Okay, so how it is being produced? It's pretty clearly given in this chart. So just have a look of that as well. Okay, so these are the various catecholamines biosynthesis. So phenylalanine converted to tyrosine, that is converted to L-dopa to dopamine to norepinephrine and epinephrine. So the series of reactions and the enzymes involved quite important. Okay. So next disorders of tyrosine metabolism. The very very important area according to me is this. Okay, yes, you need to have an idea of the, I mean the metabolism, the chart and the series of reactions. But the disorders related to them is the applied aspect. So that's the reason they play, like they take a more importance. I feel so. Just have a look of. All the disorders related to tyrosine metabolism. So exactly how the question can be asked is, uh, which enzyme is being blocked or what reaction is being affected in phenylketonuria? Then you have to go for this. That is phenylalanine hydroxylase. Okay. So all these diseases and the respective enzymes and the respective reactions are quite important. Even alkaptonuria is again quite important. So do give a good glance to this. Okay, so next coming to the tryptophan. So tryptophan. So if you see, this is the overview of tryptophan. Okay, so Hartnup's disease. Okay, it is characterized by low plasma levels of tryptophan and other neutral amino acids and their elevated urinary excretion. Okay, so this is regarding tryptophan, which is quite important for the NAD. 
okay so that is nicotinic acid ribonucleotide uh, and dinucleotide so so just have a look of this just give a glance no need to get into each and everything for this just what exactly is the importance of that okay so if you see they are important tryptophan is necessary for the coenzymes of niacin right so they can ask you where all the what is uh, important amino acid for the coenzymes of niacin then you have to go for tryptophan okay so like that it's quite important next this is a serotonin melatonin pathway so melanin is different from melatonin okay so melanin is related to tyrosine now it is mel melatonin which is related to the tryptophan again so okay so that is different so it is involved melatonin is involved in circadian rhythms right so this is quite important so have a look of this as well next cysteine so this is a metabolism so i mean the sulfur containing amino acids is a cysteine right so this is the overall view of it okay next the branch amino acids so marple syrup maple syrup maple syrup urine disease okay so this is a metabolic disorder of a branch chain amino acids okay so here the urine smells to be like a maple syrup or a burnt sugar hence the name is given like that okay so this is due to the defect in the enzyme branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase so even that is quite important have a look next lysine catenine plays a very important role in fatty acid oxidation okay so this is just a summary of lysine metabolism and catenine so just the series of this so have a look of this just give a glance to it glutathione okay so glutathione is a tripeptide that contains glutamate okay next acetyl n acetyl glutamate and amino butyric acid so again these are very important so glutamate is decarboxylated to gaba which is present mostly in the brain so this is an important line again and glutamate is also present in clotting factors 2 7 9 and 10 as gamma carboxyglutamate and it is again involved in coagulation so which of the following in gets involved in coagulation then you have to go for glutamate so glutathione is a tripeptide which contains glutamate okay so just give a glance to it next serine the overview of the serine metabolism just have a idea so synthesis of essential non essential amino acids so this really gives so what are uh, the non essential amino acids and what from where are they synthesized from so this gives you the brief review of everything next the urea cycle everything kept in one chart all the important points so urea cycle mainly occurs in the liver and the urea is being eliminated by the kidney okay so this fumarate forms the link with the tca cycle next the urea cycle is also called as ornithine cycle or krebs hensellet cycle and the enzymes which are present in mitochondria that is carbomyl phosphatase and ornithine trans uh, trans carbomylase whereas enzymes which are present in cytosol are arginosuccinase arginosuccinose synthase and arginase okay so many times the questions are asked in and around this particular flow chart or the urea cycle the cycle which is pretty clearly given here so just i think you are very well aware of it so these are the various questions of the various important areas so arginase is activated by carbon dioxide and manganese and ornithine and lysine compete with arginine by competitive inhibition okay arginase is mostly found in the liver so all these are just the important points taken from your textbook note them down And then the disease is related okay so what enzyme deficiency causes what or the which respective disease so hyperammonia type 1 is because of deficiency of carbomyl phosphate synthase 1 deficiency of ornithine trans carbamylase hyperammonia type 2 arginosuccinate synthase deficiency causes citrullinemia okay citrullinemia next uh, arginosuccinase enzyme deficiency causes arginosuccinic aciduria and arginase defect or deficiency causes hyperarginemia okay so again this is quite important so everything related to urea cycle is put forward here have a look so here the atps and all that okay so that's it regarding urea cycle so with this we have given a very quick glance to the protein metabolism okay and the urea cycle so important areas are the diseases related to the respective amino acids 
and the uh, little glands of the uh, metabolism of the various amino acids and very important area is the urea cycle and what are the essential and non-essential amino acids and the names of the amino acids and the classification of the amino acids. So that is enough. So just have a look of this. Okay. So this is regarding the quick revision of the protein metabolism. Okay. Thank you.